truck rolling up I-77. Nothing remarkable about it. And at quick glance, it's hard to figure what it has to do with this man. I did crack cocaine and pain pills. David Arthur was an addict. His family life was falling apart. He was headed back to jail. I went from a clean record to four felonies, four or five felonies on my record. And More time behind bars, another shot at rehab. David faced a choice, a crossroads. It was embarrassing because I had been there before. But this time was different. And not only did I change the addiction, I changed who I was. I want to know what you expect of me. David now works at crossroads. Sometimes he gets paid, sometimes he doesn't. The place is hurting. Donations have been dwindling. 66% yeah, of our income is a thrift store. And there is competition for donations. Bins like this can be found near Crossroads, near David's house. Heck, they're everywhere. People are not investigating what they're get, donating their money to. We okay. did. The one closest to David's house is for a charity called Children's World Hope Foundation. Its website says it helps lots of places and people. Brenner Children's Hospital in Winston-Salem confirms the foundation has helped provide parties for children and their families while they're in the hospital. But the charity also claims to help Second Harvest Food Bank. As far as you know, you've had no connection with, no. with this uh, organization. We don't know of this organization at all. Back to that truck cruising up I-77. It was labeled Children's World Hope Foundation. It went all the way to High Point and this warehouse, the foundation's mailing address. A man who says he's a volunteer for the organization tells us they have 350 bins around the state. He says the donations are mostly sold to a broker, the cash put into the charity. The foundation's website led us in another direction, to a Dr. Bradley, a dermatologist, a founding director of the foundation. Her first name is Julita. She lives at this house in Huntersville. I just had a question about your, the, the foundation. The doctor was in, but she told us we needed to talk to her husband, Todd Vickstrom. When my husband comes, he will be happy to help you. She gave us a phone number. Mr. Vickstrom, this is Jane. While we waited, we did some digging. Vickstrom previously called the charity Childhood Dreams Foundation. In a 2010 tax filing, it claimed $426,000 in donations. $159,000 went to pay people. Then came a whole bunch of other expenses, rent, cost of the truck, fuel, insurance, supplies, and travel. $236,000 in all. It left just under $28,000, or 6.5%, to be given out in contributions and grants. I haven't called us back, so we're going to try again. This time, no one was home. Hopefully they'll call us back soon. But just this morning, the foundation's website changed. There was a reply to media attention. It says they began running this ad campaign on TV before even contacting us. Not true. We made contact at the door and on the phone last Friday. The ads started Monday. The website goes on to say, as founder of the organization, I have intentionally striven for anonymity. It also says these few letters posted acknowledge donations, not the donor. Often it was not done in the name of Children's World Hope, but the names of directors, or anonymously. Deep inside their heart, they Meantime, David continues the work of Crossroads. Would you be alive if it wasn't for Crossroads? No. I'd be in prison or dead. There's no other option. Late today, another development in all this. The North Carolina Secretary of State's office is sending letters to Vickstrom. The state denying him a charity license until he complies with a number of state requirements including providing a list of officers and directors, a list of program activities, and all required financial information. You can read this and the Foundation's online statement by going to WBTV.com. Molly? Sometimes a story leads you down a long road with unexpected turns. On the surface, it's hard to figure what this truck has to do with this man. I did crack cocaine and pain pills. David Arthur had hit a dead end. He was an addict and headed back to jail. I went from a clean record to four felonies, four or five felonies on my record. But from the depths came a glimmer of light. It came from faith 
and a rehabilitation home called Crossroads. And not only did I change the addiction, I changed who it was. Crossroads is now struggling financially. It relies on donations to its thrift store. But lately, some of those donations are ending up in these drop boxes and on this truck. Where is it headed? Who's benefit? People are not investigating what they're get, donating their money to. We are. He disappeared. It's a problem solver investigation tonight at 11.